Guys, welcome back to Up Late with Charlie Ranger. Now, my next guest is a two-time Olympian, bronze medalist, and one of the world's best water polo players. She recently returned from the Rio Olympics and has been good enough to join us in the studio tonight, Rowie Webster. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. No problem at all. Um, now, you just recently come back from Rio. I have. The Olympics, your second Olympics. Correct, yeah. Yeah, um, congratulations, you're a double Olympian, that's amazing. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it um, it feels pretty good, I guess. It's a, it's been a childhood dream and something that I've been lucky enough to work hard and achieve. So it's it's pretty cool when you put it like that. With um, because for for us back in Australia, like before the Olympics, there was all this stuff about will will the Rio Olympics be safe? Um, will the water quality? Blah 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 blah. What what was it like for you actually there? Were there any of those issues, or did it sort of just go off without a hitch? Yeah, well, I think you all saw that our pool went green, <laughs> yeah. so water quality not so good. Did you have to play in the green pool? We did, we did, we had to play. Yeah, so yeah, it, it was pretty ugly, wasn't it? But was it like what was that in the end? Was that anything that you should be worried about, or was it just supposedly no worries? Um, safety checked out, but. We are uh, out, yeah, our eyes went very red and our, our hair discolored a little bit. So, um, and then we didn't have warm showers for three weeks. So we had to be pretty resilient in, in terms for that. And, yeah. Uh, but other than that, like, we're all good. Olympics was, was, was awesome. That's amazing. Um, now, I also want to ask you um, about. Something I don't understand is professional athletes. Uh, I don't understand how you guys have the, just the will to keep doing what you do. How, like for you, what is it that keeps you, keeps driving you forward to be the best you can be? Yeah, I guess firstly, we are a different species. So <laughs> I think, I think we're not normal people and every athlete has to be a little bit on the spectrum somewhere um, because yeah, there's just a screw missing. Who wants to wake up at 4.30 every morning in the Melbourne weather and, um, and jump in a pool for two hours and, and basically kill themselves at training? So, um, yeah, I, I think it's, it's something that you aspire to because it's a child, for me it was a childhood dream. So I, um, I wanted to go to the Olympics since I was five. I found the sport that I absolutely loved. Mm. And, um, and that passion hasn't really gone away. So for me, um, that's what drives me every day is to be a better athlete, a better person and a better leader for the future of women's water polo. And you, uh, I mean, you've got a family history of not only sport, but water polo in particular. Um, did you ever feel any, any pressure that you had to go into water polo or had to become a pro athlete because you were part of this family of like elite sports people? Not really. I guess the driving factor for me was that I wanted to be better than my three older siblings. <laughs> so I wanted to have bragging rights over Sunday night dinner, to be honest. Um, no, definitely not. My parents were always encouraging, just said, do what you love, um, you know, play the sport you love. It doesn't matter what it is um, and try and be fit and healthy. And it just happened that, you know, I, I got on a national team reasonably early and um, I thought this was cool. And one of the coolest things is you get to travel all around the world. So I've been to places that I would never have got to if I wasn't being an athlete, you know, basically Siberia. I've traveled around South America. I've done most of Europe, um, South Africa, and you know, places that you dream of and you look on a map and go, yep, I've been there, 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 and there. So, and my family supported me the whole way. And how different is it for you? Because obviously water polo is not like a mainstream sport in Australia. Yeah, so correct. when you travel to Europe where water polo I is more popular, is it just a totally different experience or is it the, the same, but you know, just I think it's more pool? exciting. Yeah, I think like we were just pre Rio, we were um, in Hungary for a mini tournament, like what you would think was a, a weekend game here at the local pool. Um, the crowd were letting off flares. Oh, really? It was pouring rain. You know, every Aussie person would have packed up and gone home. Yeah. And the, the Hungarians were chanting, they had drums, they had flares. It was just incredible. And I kind of thought, this is unbelievable. So any opportunity we get to play in front of a European crowd is, is so fun. Yeah. It's like a performance, to be honest. They have halftime shows and it's great. Um, now, I want to ask you 
uh, about your sport in particular, because yeah. when I watch water polo, I love watching water polo, but yeah. I obviously don't very often because it's obviously not on free to wear TV yeah. or anything like that. But you guys, like that sport is insane to me. It looks just like constant pain. Um, <laughs> is, is that all it is? Like what's going on with water polo? Uh, when I work that out, I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's pretty hard. The rules are pretty unclear and that's why it's a, it's a tough sport to follow because one game you'll, or one minute of the game you'll see a referee calling a turnover for one thing and then the next minute we're getting away with an elbow or a, mm. you know, a sneaky kick or something like that. So, look, you're not the only one that said, I don't understand the sport. Yeah, um, yeah it, it basically is is like most ball sports, it's whoever ends up with the most goals at the yeah. end of the game wins. <laughs> yes. So that's the logic behind it. Get that round thing past the person jumping in the cage and um, you win. How much, how much of water polo is a game under the surface as it is above? Probably about 80%. So what you guys see and what we actually do are two very different things. Because I was speaking to someone recently who had by no means played a high level of water polo but said when I used to play it was three swimsuits um, and the like the most outer one I would stretch, it would be too big so that when they grab me or grab me under the water, it wouldn't hold me back. Is that, does that, all that stuff happen? And it, it does happen. We tried to produce the unrippable um, suit yeah. for the Olympics. Didn't quite go to plan. So you're we getting had, suits ripped underwater and everything? Yeah, we, we probably went through maybe six to eight suits between the team over the six games at the Olympics. So, and we don't wear another suit underneath. So if our suit goes, <laughs> we're swimming around. Hey, Rowan, get out of the pool. TV. The game's yeah. over. No, no, yeah. I'm with you guys. <laughs> I'm good. I'll I'm just okay. keep swimming. Yeah. I'll keep swimming. So, um, it, yeah, it's kind of embarrassing when your suit rips, especially in the middle of the play, and then the goalkeepers yeah. always want to pass you the ball. Yeah. The minute your suit rips, they have a great time yeah. making sure you're showing off everything to the public. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I also wanted to ask, because I read that you played AFL when you mm. were younger. Correct. Um, and I, and I'm, I'm wondering for someone like you, a professional athlete, like I'm, we're hearing more and more of pro athletes, you know, jumping codes and playing AFL now yep. that there's the women's competition. Is there any temptation for someone like you to, to cross code and, and get involved in the AFL? Yeah, totally. So I, I've always loved sport on the whole. Um, and to be honest, I actually think I'm better on land than I am <laughs> in the water, funny enough. Um, so it's definitely something that I've been interested in and the more athletes I see jumping ship like I know a few of the Rio basketballers have come across to footy and obviously they're land to land so it's a little bit easier yeah, yeah, yeah. but um I think it's awesome the fact that it was meant to be a 2020 um pursuit for the AFL and now they've they've pushed it forward to 2017 I think now's the time so um ask me again in in three months time and we'll see and because um do you know what else I actually read uh you're a Melbourne Demons fan. I am huge. You're up. Yeah, I'm, it's, it's hard to hope, but we'll get a, there. We'll get there. It is yes. a tough life being a Demon supporter. I know. But I if know. the doggies can do it, we can do it. Do you know what? We should just talk about the Ds for the rest of this. Let's interview. do it. I don't care what they're watching. <laughs> it's just Ds for me. Yeah. Um, but it but it is also that thing, isn't it? For you know, for women women's sport especially, like um, the pay differential and there's yeah. the prospect of possibly being a part of what is one of Australia's biggest sports. Yeah, it's huge. And I think what we see now and what we see in three seasons time is going to be completely different. I think it's great that we're, we've got the sport out there. Um, so the equality across the sport is, is finally there. And I think the money will come eventually. And I think people just need to um, realise that these women are going to go super hard. Yeah. So I think it's going to be exciting. I think people are going to go, absolutely, I want to go to the women's game and the, and the men's game. So I think slowly the um, public's perception of, of women's sport is changing. So. Awesome. Rowie, hopefully we get more chances to see you in the pool in the future. Thank you so much for coming on. Well, thanks, um, guys. It's been a pleasure having you here. Thanks, Guys, Charlie. we'll go to a break, and then when we come back, we've got Barefoot Spacemen. <laughs> 